Hello guys, today we are going to look into how to write resilient code and we will be writing a script from scratch to demonstrate this. For me, resilient code is code that recovers from errors, doesn't do the same thing twice if it's run more than once and has a logging system where I can inspect what it has done at every step of its execution. So let's start with an empty JS file. So for an example, let's say we have an API endpoint that returns a list of alba. So for this script, we have a couple of things you want to do. So the first one is you want to fetch all albums. So the next step is you want to fetch the photos of each of these album. And then lastly, you want to download these photos to a folder. So first, let's set up our script. So this script can have an async function called run that will be the start of the script. And then we can just call this function directly in our file. So a good practice is uh, we want this file to exit properly if it succeeds or if it fails. So we can add a root then function to this which runs after the function completes successfully. So we can log done and then make sure that we exit properly with the correct exit code and then we can also catch errors and then exit properly so how do we run this script so in our terminal we can use node index.js which will run the scripts or if you are using burn like myself i use burn index.js so let's go back to these three functionalities that we want to have so the first functionality is we want to fetch all albums so let's add an async function called fetch albums that does this so this will call our api endpoint convert the response to json and return that response so the next one is uh, the fetch album photos function. So let's call it fetch album photos. So this will receive an album ID and then still call the API and get the photos. So in our case, the album ID is a string. And then finally, we have the function that should download the album to a folder on your computer. So we are going to call it download photo. So it's going to receive the photo that you want to download and then the album folder name. So let's also type these parameters. So the photo should be an object with a URL, say a URL that you can download the photo from and then maybe the ID of the photo. And then the album folder name is a string. So inside we can fetch the photo, convert it into an array buffer and then save the photo to a file. So we can actually require this at the top of the the file instead of here so import fs from fs promises so our three functionalities have now been implemented so let's go inside our run function and then execute this so we fetch the albums and then for each album we get the we generate the folder name so we can actually generate the folder name from the title so we can do album dot splits you can remove the spaces and just replace them with dashes so we make the folder directory and then fetch all the album photos and then download each photo from the album. So the first step of making this resilient is making sure that you're not bombarding the API that you're fetching with too many requests. So we need to be able to at least wait a second or two between requests so that we don't send many requests at once. So we can add a sleep function that does just that. So we give it a number of milliseconds and it will wait for that number of milliseconds before proceeding to the next line. So for example, for each album we fetch, we can sleep for one second. And then also for each photo we fetch, also make sure that uh, we sleep for one second. Okay, so this should be enough for our first version. So let's try to run it and see if it runs into any problems. So ban index.js. So one thing that we have forgotten while writing this script is that we don't have any visual feedback of what is going on. We don't know if the albums are being fetched or on what album the script is running currently. So we need a way to at least log everything that happens in our script. So we could for a start use simple console.log messages. So for example, in the first fetch albums function, we can log that you are fetching albums. And then in the fetch album photos function, we can log we are fetching photos for this album ID. And then for the download photo function, we can log downloading this photo for the album. So this is a good start. So let's save and start Start with this and then we can rerun our script and you have bumped into our first error the file or folder exists so if you look at the files here you can see that while we ran the script for the first time a folder was created and you can see that the first image was downloaded and so when we try to run the script the second time it's redoing the same task and therefore bumping into a problem of uh, having duplicate so remember at the start we mentioned that a resilient script should do one thing only once and doesn't fail when you try to redo the same thing over and over again. So with that principle in mind, let's update our code 
to reflect that. So for example, let's create an albums folder to save all those album folders in. So before we create a folder, we should always check if it exists. So you can do a simple check called folder exists. So which for example, should check if the albums folder exists. And if it doesn't exist, then we create it. So no matter how many times this piece of code is run, the script does not attempt to create the same folder twice. So we can do the same thing for this line here. So we should so we should create an album folder if it doesn't exist. So we can check if it exists and if it doesn't create it. So that takes care of our first problem. So let's save the file and then we can try rerunning the same script. So you can see the progress of the operations in our console logs. So simple log statements like this, they get the job done. But the problem is these logs are not stored anywhere. So there's no way to keep track of what your script was doing if you exit the script. So for example, if we close this script like this, we have lost all these logs. So that brings us into the aspect of uh, making your logs persistent. That is saving them somewhere so that you can be able to inspect them at a later date. So to be able to achieve this, we need to use a logging library that does that. So for this example, I'm going to use the Winston logging library. So let's add it. And then we are going to move our console log statements here to use the Winston logs. So let's set it up at the top of the file here. So we can import it, import Winston from Winston. So our logger is a, so we'll use Winston.createLogger API, which can have multiple transports that are used to save the logs. So for the console transport, the logs will be loaded to the console. And then we have a file transport where the logs will be loaded to a file. And we can also add error transport, for example, called error.log where errors are logged into. So we'll be able to find all logs in this combined.log file and then all errors in this file. And this has a lot of options. So you can, for example, also set the format of uh, your log statements. So for example, we want the log statement to be in JSON format. So you can use the format.json as the log format. And then in the console logs, you can use the simple format. So let's go ahead and use this log. So you can just do a find and replace for all the console.log statements and just replace them with logger.info from Winston. So all logs will now go through our logger here. And then if anything goes wrong at the bottom here, we can use the error log. So let's save this and then see our progress. So ban index.js. So you can see our logs are being displayed here on the console. And if you also look at the files here, you can see that an error.log file has been created and a combined.log file has been created where our logs are being added. So our script is uh, shaping up nicely and we can continue with uh, improving it even further. So let's exit it for now. So one thing that our script does is it makes a lot of fetch requests to a remote server to get uh, the albums and the photos and then to also download the photos. Now one thing we need to consider is that this fetch request can fail and we want to be able to retry this if it fails. We don't want to give up too fast. So for example, you're not going to see this but uh, I'm going to disable internet connection for this computer. So let's try rerunning the script with the internet disconnected. So you can see that our script has failed on the first try. We want at least our script to be a little persistent in doing this. So this brings me to an algorithm that we can use to do the retries. So this algorithm is called exponential backoff. So to keep it simple, an exponential backoff algorithm reduces the rate of doing a task in response to a variable. So for example, if we fetch an album, we wait one second, and then we retry fetching that album. If it fails, the next time you're going to wait at least two seconds. If it fails again, the next time you're going to wait at least three or four or five seconds. So instead of doing a retry in five seconds, the wait period can increase to something like 15 seconds, which will greatly increase your chances of success with that request. So most of the libraries that help you perform retries use the exponential backoff algorithm to achieve this. And one of them is actually called exponential backoff. So let's add it and you can see how it works. Exponential backoff. So let's go ahead and use it in our code. So we can import it. So it exports a function called backoff that we can use. So what we want to retry are the fetch requests. So the request that fetches the albums, that fetches the photos, and that also downloads the photo. So you can put that in a utility function. So let's call this something like uh, retry fetch. So this will receive a URL 
and then attempt to fetch that URL and then use the back of API to retry that URL. I like this library because it's so simple. Most of the libraries require a lot of configurations just to figure out how they work. But for this library, you just pass in your async function that fetches the data and then some configuration options for how that function runs. So for example, we wait for one second to do the fetch and you want the retry to be five. So for example, you can say retry this 10 times and then you can provide a time multiple that will be used to calculate the back of strategy. So if you wait for one second, so the next time you multiply the wait time by two, it will be now two seconds. And then the next time it will be four seconds. And then the next time it will be eight seconds. So we can also log the retries using this retry prop. So Bakov will call this function to determine if it's going to retry the next request. So by default, we just return the true. We just want to access the error message that caused the retry to fail and then save it so that we can inspect it in future. So we also get access to the attempt number. So we can log the attempt number at least to know on which retry the fetch request failed. So this should be enough for a retry fetch function. So we can type it so the URL parameter is a string. So let's use our retry fetch function here. So instead of a fetch we call retry fetch so the same thing for the fetch albums function and also the same for the download albums function so that should be good for now so all our requests will now retry at least 10 times before they exit so let's test our retry strategy here so i'm going to disable the internet and then try rerunning the same script so you can see that the first attempt has failed. We're waiting for the second attempt has failed. We're waiting for the third attempt, which has also failed. So let me try re-enabling the internet and wait to see if uh, it will pick up good so you can see that uh, the internet has picked up and now we are resuming the downloading of the photos and this increases the chances of our script completing successfully so that is done let's exit the script and then go to the next item in our list so we have a logger we have a retry functionality what we don't have is a caching functionality so if you look at our script here every time you run it it starts downloading each album from album one and then album two and the rest so we don't want to keep doing Doing the same thing twice so we should be able to continue from where the script was exited from so for example we are downloading the third photo right now so when we exit we need to be able to recover and start downloading from the first photo and again for caching i have a library that i really like that i always use so the library is called file system cache so from the name this stores the cache in your file system so let's use this so where do you want to cache the information from so the first thing is you want to cache the fetch request so for fetching albums we don't want to fetch albums over and over again so if we have already fetched the albums we should be getting them from the cache instead of uh, running the request again so let's import this caching library so import cache from file system cache so let's also set it up so const cache equals to cache so it's a class and then we can pass in the options that we want our cache to have so for example you can provide a base path where the cache will be stored in your file system so for us let's just store them in the cache folder in this current directory and then we can give them a name so for example you can just call them json placeholder from uh, the api and another interesting option is that you can give the cache an expiry date so for example you can let it expire after one week so any Anything after one week is considered stale, so the request will have to be made afresh. So this is good if you want to at least be able to refresh the cache every now and then. So for the fetching albums function here, for example, we can first check if the albums are in the cache. So if they're in the cache, we return them. Otherwise, we run this request. So the same thing for the album photos. So we check if the cache has this item by the cache.get. If it has them, we return them. Otherwise, we run this. So what I've forgotten to do here is that if they are not in the cache we make sure that we set the value after fetching so we use cache.set to set the value of these to set albums and then also here after fetching the photos make sure you store them in the cache so that the next time the api endpoint won't be hit so the same thing for the photos we check if the photo is in the cache and if it's there we return that cache so copilot is wilding out here so let's just remove that piece and then return to cached photo so we write the file and then after it has 
written to disk we log that and then we set the cache so let's rerun the script again so you can see we have downloaded photo one and photo two so let's wait for photo three to download good and then we exit and then we try running the script again so we should be able to start from photo four so we are able to resume our script if we exit it halfway so that should be it our script now achieves all the principles that we set at the beginning it persists the logs via the winston library it's able to retry failed requests we are using the back of strategy and also it's able to resume from a point by caching the operations so if you can figure out how to integrate three of these functionalities in your scripts or in your code you'll sort of protect it from failing i hope this example at least gave you ideas on how you could achieve a similar setup with your code so that should be all thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video